there has been quite a lot of debate, dare I say argument, about this question going on on the internet for quite some time. So I thought it'd be a good idea to come out and make a video to explain my take on it and why I teach what I teach and the way in which I teach it. Now, if you're not sure what's meant when somebody says change your focal length and it will change the perspective of an image, then I suggest you click the link and go and watch my Focal Length Explained film first, because that will tell you what we're talking about. Then you can come back here. Because of the argument that's raging about this, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at the meaning of the word perspective. So I went online to the Oxford Dictionary's website and they had plenty to say about it. Perspective. The art of representing three-dimensional objects in a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth and position in relation to each other. The appearance of viewed objects with regard to their relative position distance from the viewer, etc. For example, a trick of perspective. In geometry, it's the relation of two figures on the same plane, such that pairs of corresponding points lie on concurrent lines and corresponding lines meet in collinear points. A pair, no, a particular attitude towards a way or regarding something a point of view. There is more, and as you can see, there is plenty of room for confusion over what the meaning could be. So are we just arguing over semantics? Lens compression, image compression, compression of perspective. I tend to believe they're all pretty much the same thing. It's when the background of an image starts to creep up behind the subject and it all tends to sort of compress together. There's also there's some people that say that that is nothing to do with the focal length that you use, it's to do with viewpoint. Well, yeah, there could be a, a point there. But what I would say is that, so viewpoint, if I'm looking at you from here, I'm looking at you from this point of view. But if I move over here, I'm now looking at you from this point of view. I haven't actually changed very much apart from the point of view. But if I look at you from here, but then I move backwards, I would suggest I'm still looking at you from the same point of view. I'm just moving closer or further away. And that's quite interesting. So let's go and do a little test. So what I have here, is a zoom lens set to 50 millimeters, and I'm gonna leave it set on 50 millimeters. You're just gonna to have to take my word that I'm not gonna change it. It's an FX lens, and I'm using it on an FX camera for this demonstration. There is no reason why I'm using an FX camera instead of a DX crop sensor camera. I just happen to be doing that. I'm gonna take a shot, <clears throat> and I'm gonna use you guys in the background as represented by Lorna and the video camera. And the subject of my photo is going to be our supermodel, Abby Hills, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Abby Hills. Too much, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot a portrait of Abby from about the waist up like this, just kind of like a half length portrait with you guys to her right. So that'll be on the left of the picture. Let's do that first. And I'm gonna compose this in camera using my 50 millimeter focal length. I love the moody sky going on behind you, Abby. Right, just get all that nicely lined up, focus on Abby, and there's our picture. That looks really quite cool. Let's take the same shot. I want to get the elements of this picture in the same place. We've got the tree in the middle in between you guys, Lorna and the camera, and Abby. So I'm going to move back and make sure I don't change my viewpoint by going from side to side so that the tree is still in between Abby and Lorna, about here. Let's take that same picture and see whether the background has come in closer and compression of perspective has occurred. When we look at the first shot, it's not a bad portrait and you can see where the background is in relation to Abby. We've got the tree there, we've got you guys, as in Lorna and the video camera. If we look at the second shot, which I took from further away where we increase the distance, it's really obvious that you guys have become really, really tiny in the picture. So I wouldn't say that's a great composition, but 
the way you deal with that would be to crop in. So let's just zoom in, let's crop in and see if we can create the same sort of composition, the half length portrait with you guys in the background. And do you know what? Yes, the background has come up closer behind Abby. So I would say that compression of perspective has occurred. Well, it depends on your point of view or perspective, really, doesn't it? Yes, as you change the distance from the camera to the subject, so perspective expands and contracts along with that. But as you saw, there's a cost attached to it. To get the same composition, you have to crop pixels away in post-production. Well, that's more work, but also you're degrading your image. You're throwing away a lot of those very expensive megapixels you paid all that money for and that's going to have an impact on image quality. Now, I know we all have our own learning styles. Some people want to know why are certain things happen in a certain way, and that's completely cool. And for you guys, I've added some links below. Go and click on them and you can find out all about it. Personally, I like to just try and keep things simple. I know that by putting on a longer focal length, I've got to move back to compensate for the magnification so I can keep the same composition. And okay, that will change the background. It will compress the perspective. So why haven't I gone into that? I think if you're learning photography, you've got enough on your plate trying to think about juggling ISOs and apertures and shutter speeds to get your exposure, thinking about composition, how to align things in your picture, thinking about white balances, thinking about all that stuff in the menu and all the things that you read in magazines, many of which is kind of conflicting in my opinion. So I've kind of always gone with the view that, okay, if you do this, it'll look like that. The whys and the wherefores, I think, are less important. So I've probably stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest by making this film. My next stop is to go and get some cosmetic surgery, change my appearance a little bit before being smuggled under a blanket to a safe house in a secret location. Oh God, they're coming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.